Hey, everybody. At the Movies with Film. Film Brown here. Just looking over the film that we're going to be showing you tonight. Ugh, remarkable film. Got my mallets here. Probably not going to need them for the old knocking myself out of a stupor type of thing. Though this does have a very nightmarish look that might drive you a little bit batty. Uh, I might need it because this deals with justice. Justice system. Is justice blind? Uh, and the whole business of who is guilty? And what are you guilty of? Are you guilty by nature? Or are you guilty by, well, living in society and uh, accruing the, the, the dirt that society heaps upon you? And does the, con the person who is being accused have the right to know what they're being accused of? Well, we in our democratic constitutional sense would obviously say, yeah. We should know what we're being uh, accused of. Likewise, we should know uh, and be able to face our accusers. Well, we're looking at a film tonight by Orson Welles based on Franz Kafka's The Trial. We are looking at The Trial. A wonderful Orson Welles film made just after his Touch of Evil experience back in the United States. This is uh, really uh, Welles' favorite film. According to him, this is a film that he thought was... Uh, should have been up at least in the top five, if not the best film that he had produced. He wrote it. He had a great deal with the uh, editing. And, of course, the great camera work in this film has all the hallmarks of a Walesian film. Wide-angle lens. You've got the old 18.5 distortion going on here. Uh, likewise, yeah, even though our print is not a widescreen print, as you can see, this intro is. Okay, we've got this newfangled technology in here, going to bring it to you, our widescreen introductions. But at the same time, uh, this is a film that no doubt was a, a 1.85 aspect ratio release. Likewise, you're going to see some of the greatest uses of architecture and of uses of set in this film. Small individuals, which makes a lot of sense because we're dealing with a man who is trapped. A man who is awoken one morning by police walking into his room, and from then on, his world is turned upside down. The, the man who plays the, well, Mr. K, as he's called, or Joseph K, uh, is none other than Tony Perkins, Anthony Perkins. Remember him from Psycho? Played uh, the, one of the great Alan Bates roles, obviously, in the Psycho film. He plays here a hapless individual who thinks he's in control of his domain, but certainly he is not. Once they start chiseling out from under him his self-confidence, his knowledge of what is it that makes you a good person, what is it that makes you a bad person, who is it that you should associate with and not, what do you trust, who do you trust? His world starts to fall apart. And as his world falls apart, you will notice that the film moves deeper and deeper into chaotic, strange architectural structures, showing him uh, running down hallways and tunnels, running uh, up stairways with little girls chasing him up there, and wa little eyeballs watching through slats of broken boards as he is talking to various people who he thinks can help him out, but nobody can help him out. There's some really funny sequences in this film. Now, you've got to remember something. Now, it's kind of interesting. Wells takes this, and he's, you watch this, and there is a bit of uh, ponderousness here at times, uh, and taking it a little bit more seriously than perhaps Kafka might have himself. There are stories that when Kafka read drafts of this uh, novel, the trial, to other folks, he was laughing. He found this to be a, well, a serial comic uh, film, or novel in this case. Uh, in our case, Wells eh, takes it a little bit seriously, but there are some great moments of humor in here as well. Uh, the uh, Wells, again, has a prominent role in this film. He plays the advocate, as he is called. And as the advocate, think about what an advocate is supposed to do for you, and, well, does he fulfill his function or not? Likewise, notice what happens to the cops who come uh, at the very beginning of this film to accuse Joseph K. of uh, some wrongdoing. They never, one, and I'm not giving anything away here, he never does find out what he is being accused of. And he never does, okay, get a clear grasp of what is happening. Pay attention, however, to that little allegory at the beginning of the film. 
There's this little allegory about a man who goes to the door of the law and talks to the doorkeeper. Pay attention to that. That's going to pop up again later, near the end of the film. And uh, so you'll want to kind of hold that in your head uh, as you carry on your thinking through this movie. There are clues to be had in there if we are wise enough to get them. This, to me, is a film that uh, it's difficult to get through in some ways because it is a long film. Okay, it's nearly two hours long, and it, it does take some patience, but it's worth it. Orson Welles is always worth it. And as I was watching this, I was thinking, you know, there are very few films that uh, really do capture nightmare well. I think of Andalusian Dog by Bunel Dali. There's one that did. I think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's a film that did. Here is a film as well that creates nightmare. And in this case, as in many cases of nightmare, it's a paranoid nightmare. This is a paranoid nightmare. Have fun with this film. The Trial. 1962, Orson Welles at his gall darn best. And what is the verdict? Well, at least all I can say is it's one heck of a great movie. Roll them, Smokey.